Welcome to Understanding Program Status with Earned Value Management. Leadership teams only want to know the answer to two simple questions about the status of their strategic initiatives. Timing, when will the work effort be done, and resource allocation, will additional funding be required? The key frustration leadership teams, program sponsors, program steering committees have is that they find out too late a program and or project is in trouble to do anything about fixing the problem. So let's look at a technique for communicating program status that may be able to help answer the two key questions and reduce frustration. Key initiative or program status can be described in two dimensions, time expressed in duration, cost expressed in currency or hours. If you were to apply the cumulative program cost for all planned work over the planned duration, you would get an S-curve. This S-curve is known as the Performance Measurement Baseline and the point at the top of the curve is the budget at completion. An example might be $1.4 million over 14 months. Throughout the planned duration of the program, the program has a status. The status at any point in time, time now, has a budgeted value. This budgeted value is known as the planned value, the accumulative value of the budgeted work at time now. When the leadership team asks for the status, in addition to the planned value, they should also be told about actual cost. If actual cost is plotted along with the planned value, the leadership team can assess if costs are in alignment with planned or budgeted spend, exceeding planned spend, or below planned spend. However, the leadership team will not know if costs are out of line unless compared with the concept of earned value. Earned value is the accumulative value of the budgeted cost of the work performed at a particular point in time. This is illustrated in the EV curve. From these three data points, you can calculate performance and variance. Cost variance is simply the difference between the earned value and actual cost at time now. A negative variance is over budget, a positive variance is under budget, and a zero variance is on budget. Now here's where I am going to deviate from the PMI Project Management Body of Knowledge, also known as the PMBOK and it has to do with the calculation of schedule variance. I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of emails starting, stating the flaw in my thinking, but hear me out first. The PMBOK will tell you to calculate the difference between earned value and planned value at time now. This will tell you scheduled variance in terms of scheduled spend, and since spend rates vary week to week, it is difficult to state variance in terms of time. I think it is much more useful to calculate schedule variance comparing the duration or date at time now with the duration or date when the value of work was planned. I think it's much easier for an executive to look at line B on this chart and see that the program is 30 days behind, 60 days behind, etc. Using variance, some indexes, one can estimate duration to complete and end up with the value for estimate at completion for time or duration. By the way, graphically, the way to think about estimate at completion for time is the point in time when earned value equals the budget at completion. Remember, budget at completion will change throughout the change control process, so remember to keep budget at completion updated with approved changes, scope additions, subtractions, etc. The variance at completion for time is simply the difference in time between the budget at completion duration and the estimate at complete duration. Just like we did with determining estimate at completion for time, we can calculate estimate at completion of cost. By the way, graphically the way to think about estimate at completion for cost is the estimated cost where earned value equals planned value. Again, remember budget at completion for cost will change throughout the change control process, so remember to keep budget at completion updated with approved changes, scope additions, subtractions. The variance at completion for cost is simply the difference in cost between the budget at completion for cost and the estimate at completion for cost. The program leader's ability to communicate where the program is today, a projection of where the program should end up in terms of cost and time, helps the sponsor or steering committee determine if downstream and dependent programs will be negatively impacted and if they have to find additional funding to support the existing program. Remember, no one wants to go back to the money well multiple times. In addition, the leadership team will have some solid data points to help the program manager fix systemic issues that may be keeping the program from realizing its full potential in terms of execution. 
The predictive model known as earned value management can help you understand when the initiative will be completed. Again, this is an estimate based on the current performance of the program. If additional funding or resources are required to complete the initiative, what questions need to be asked to help fix some systemic and or pervasive program execution issues, and if action plans need to be set in place for downstream and dependent follow-on programs that require the in-flight program as a prerequisite. This allows the organization to be proactive versus reactive and not look dull. We hope you found this information useful. If your organization is not currently using some of these techniques to report program status, do not hesitate to contact us using the contact information on this slide. We wish you and your organization great success now and in the future.